Last semester, I had a graduate level computer networks exam coming up, and I needed a way to memorize a ton of terms, concepts, and algorithms fast. Now, the computer science educator in me knows that active recall, self-quizzing, is way more effective than just passively rereading your notes, like twice as effective according to learning science. Citations below. But making flashcards and questions takes forever. Now, you could use AI to generate those questions, but how do you know that they're not just creating believable nonsense? AI hallucinations are real, and I'm not willing to gamble my learning on bad information. But with retrieval augmented generation, I was able to turn my own course notes into an infinite supply of trustworthy these study questions instantly. Hey friends, my name is Nathan Laundry. I'm a second year computer science PhD student at the University of Toronto, interested in infrastructure for computer science education and high performance computing. In this video though, we're going to be talking about how to study for memorization heavy topics like networks for me. We're going to start with a bit of theory talking about what active recall is, why it's a better way to study and how it impacts our brains. Then we're going to talk about AI hallucinations and retrieval augmented generation. And then we're gonna get into the actual structure of my notes, how I feed it to ChatGPT and how I prompt it. But a quick teaser of how cool ChatGPT giving you free questions is. <laughs> Over here, I've uploaded my midterm notes, which you can see taken in Markdown on the left. And I've got a full conversation getting ChatGPT to ask me relevant questions from specific lectures. I mean, look at this, we've got from lecture six, it's asking me about UDP and TCP. And if I jump over to my notes, it's actually asking me about specific terms and definitions. This is so useful and so cool. So stick around if you wanna see how I do this. All right, back to the theory for just a sec though. When you're learning this kind of memorization heavy stuff, in a computer science degree, this is often in like networks, operating systems, algorithms, where there's so many terms and definitions that you need to memorize before you can even start practicing skill building. There are broadly two approaches. There's sort of passive studying, which is rereading your lecture content and textbook materials, and there's active self-quizzing. And when it comes to exam time, self-quizzing is way more effective than passive studying. Learning science has been looking through this for a long time, and there are results as dramatic as people practicing active recall remembered twice as much stuff <laughs> on exam time. So for me, studying for my networks exam, this was a no-brainer. I needed to do active recall. But why is this so much more effective? I like to think of the brain as a problem-solving machine that is prioritizing information that will be useful to it for solving problems in the future. You're constantly taking in tons of information, but it's impossible for you to like store all of it in your brain somehow. So your brain is doing this constant like triage of prioritizing which information to make easily available to you. When you quiz yourself, you're sort of presenting a problem to your brain to solve. And when you put in the effort to go retrieve the information required to solve that problem, you're telling your brain, hey, this information is useful for solving problems that are important enough for me to put in this amount of energy and effort. So it actually strengthens neural pathways that make it easier for you to remember that information. So when you passively study, you're just sort of glancing through information, but when you actively study, you signal to your brain, this is important, I need this, please remember it. <laughs> okay, we know we wanna do active recall because it's a more effective approach, but creating flashcards and quiz questions takes a lot of time and effort. And unless you're really lucky and there's like an Anki deck already available for you online, you're gonna have to create these questions your own, or you can use AI. But using AI on its own is dangerous because AI hallucinates. Now, I'm not gonna dive too deep into how LLMs work and stuff like that, but I do wanna explain why LLMs lie to you so convincingly and how dangerous that is for your learning. LLMs are not pulling from a textbook directly, unless you're using retrieval augmented generation. They're instead trained on a ton of data and then creating the most likely response. So they create strings of text and then they pick the most likely next word out of a set of words that it predicts. And it just does that on repeat. This is why people call them stochastic parrots. And what this means is sometimes the most probable sentence is not true. <laughs> it's nonsense that looks really believable. And this is the danger because 
AI will come up with things that look believable because they're probable phrases and believe it, believe it itself. It can convince you as a learner who doesn't fully understand what they what they're learning right now that this lie is true information. Here's a perfect example of an AI hallucinating some complete nonsense. The question is, what weighs more, two pounds of feathers or a pound of bricks? It first answers two pounds of feathers and a pound of bricks both weigh the same amount, which is one pound. Clearly wrong. And then in the following paragraph, it contradicts itself. And since two pounds is more than one pound, two pounds of feathers weighs more than one pound. When we read this, we know this is complete nonsense, but this is because it's like common knowledge. But if you're trying to understand computer networks for the first time, and it says something contradicting itself like this, how are you supposed to know? So AI hallucinations are a great way to accidentally learn the wrong thing or confuse yourself into despair before your exam. Use AI with caution. Retrieval augmented generation is one of the ways that we can use AI to learn more safely. Now, what does this mean? Generally with our LLM, it's just spitballing the most probable text. When we use retrieval augmented generation, we can give it some source that the AI has to fact check against before it generates stuff. Now this isn't a 100% fix, it can still hallucinate, but the chances are greatly reduced. So when we're coming up with quiz questions, we can feed it our own course notes, notes that we know are correct because we took them from the course, and know that what it's generating is doing a fact check on your factually correct notes before it's spitting you out content. Now, fact check is a bit of a misleading term. I'm not gonna get too deep into the details. It's more like doing a quick second pass, and this is why it's not 100% like foolproof, but it is significantly improved such that I'm happy with the results for my learning. So now that we know why retrieval augmented generation is helpful to us, how we can use AI to create active recall questions and why active recall questions are so useful to us, let's talk about the actual process. How do we take our notes? How do we feed it to ChatGPT? And how do we quiz ourselves? Okay, so here are my actual notes from CSE 2209 Computer Networks. Basically, I just wanna walk through how you can A, write your notes in a reasonable fashion for yourself, but B, write them such that the LLM has an easier time kind of interpreting them for you. So I write all my notes in Markdown. I do this all in Vim, but I don't really care what you use. You can use Obsidian. Vim would make you cooler, but We'll, we'll settle, we'll settle for Obsidian. I just want you to learn. Basic Markdown uses pounds or hashtags for headings. And you can see at the top, I give it the main heading, the title, and you can just do more and more headings this way, further and further down. And the LLMs actually pick up on this pretty well. I've got headings for each lecture, lecture one, and then major topics in the lecture. Characteristics of the internet and layering of the internet. The other thing I do here is use these hashtags for major concepts. So here, if it's a term that I want to know and remember and be quizzed on later, I give it a hashtag, like the link layer or the network layer and the transport layer. You can jump to lecture five, which was all about autonomous systems in BGP. I've got a hashtag for autonomous system. I've got one for peer-to-peer -peer business relationships. There's a lot on that. This makes your own notes more searchable, but it also makes them easier to parse for the LLM. Cool. So I would recommend to take sparse notes during the lecture and then do more detailed note taking after the lecture or before your exam. Now let's talk about how we feed this into your large language model. So I've got a ChatGPT plus account. It's not the super expensive one, it's the regular one. There's probably free alternatives, or if you're really cool, you can run your LLM locally and set up RAG that way. That's That would make you cooler, definitely. I should do that one day. <laughs> but anyways, here we are in the ChatGPT interface. You just click this plus, upload from computer. Oh, cool, I'm already in my digital brain thing. Um, I'll do a video on how I do all of my note-taking a different time if people are interested, but for now, we're just gonna look at this one thing. So I grab my CSC 2209 midterm prep markdown document, which has notes for every lecture because I don't want to upload 10 separate files. I hit upload and then I'm just gonna prompt ChatGPT for how I want to study. 
And it's pretty good at picking up on like what you want to do next. So here I have uploaded this markdown document. That's this one over here on the left panel. And this is the prompt. I say, I want to review major definitions and terms from lecture six. And then I say, give me one question at a time because I hate when it gives me like 10 and I'm like, I don't know where to start. <laughs> and then I give it this prompt here. If I give it an incorrect answer or an only partial, partially correct answer, give me a hint, but don't give me the full answer until I ask for it. And the reason I'm doing this is because the more we sort of have to put in a little bit of effort to recall that information, active recall, the more likely I am going to remember this. If I just get it wrong and then it gives me the correct answer, that's sort of a wasted learning opportunity. So let's do this and see what it gives us. Okay, great. Lecture six, if we jump over here on the left panel, was about UDP and TCP. It picks that up right away. And let's see, what, what is the primary difference between UDP and TCP in terms of reliability? Uh, let's give a semi-correct answer and see how it nudges us. So we'll say something like, I think UDP doesn't have the same checks that TCP does to ensure packet loss doesn't happen. I forget the rest though. And let's see how it nudges us. So it says you're, right, you're on the right track. UDP doesn't provide mechanisms to ensure reliable delivery, but TCP does. Hint, so it picks up on that nicely. Think about what TCP does when packets are lost or arrive out of order. It has mechanisms that UDP lacks. So this hint is actually pretty good. It's reminding me of two things. Sometimes packets are lost or arrive out of order and TCP has specific mechanisms for that that UDP doesn't. And so now my brain's kind of like, oh yeah, I remember that. I wonder what they were and I might be able to eke out an answer. That kind of helps you put in that effort when you're completely stumped. This is pretty good. We can also ask it for other lectures. We can say, okay, great, I remember lecture six. Let's go over lecture four. Perfect. So it prompts me, what is the main difference between forwarding and routing? And let's say that's an easy one. I just rattle it off in my head and I want another question. I can just go, uh, give me the next question. What is the distance vector Bellman forward algorithm and how does it work? And if we jump over to lecture four, we see distance vector is one of those things. So it's doing a really good job of grabbing material from my notes, organizing it in the exact same way so I can quiz I can quiz myself with specific lectures, with specific concepts. I might be I might even be able to do something like, can you ask me a question about the link state algorithm? How does the link state or Dijkstra's Dijkstra's algorithm work and how is it different from the distance vector algorithm? This is actually a question that was on my exam. <laughs> right? So this is perfect. You can go on and on and on like this. And I did this for a couple of hours before my exams and it works really, really well. If you take your notes in a structured way like this, feed them into ChatGPT, you get truly an unlimited number of trustworthy questions that you can work from. And that's pretty much all there is to it. At that point, you can just quiz yourself until you feel ready for your exam. Now, I do want to end this video off with a sort of hopeful but also warning about using AI in your computer science education. I am super interested in how LLMs could be used in education, but for every good usage of it that helps learners, there are uses that can rob learners of the learning experience. Here, I think we've built something that could be really useful to people. It's really quick and easy to use, and it lets you do active recall with, without all the tedium of creating those questions yourself. But on the other hand, you can use AI to rob yourself of learning experiences by getting it to write your code for you. Sometimes when deadlines approach and things like that, it's really easy to be tempted to get a little bit of a hint, but then the hint becomes Copilot finishing an entire function for you that does the entire algorithm. And this may sound harmless because, well, I could have just Googled it. And back in my day, we did a lot of Googling, <laughs> but the struggle is where learning happens. And when you use AI to remove that struggle, you don't learn nearly as much. I would highly, highly recommend really critically thinking, are you using AI to cre create for yourself educational struggles or to remove educational struggles? And this is a pretty good heuristic for using AI to actually learn effectively. Cool, that's all I got. Thanks.